everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Eikoki Otaku. Today with us, we have the voice of Aqua Hoshino and Oshinoko. We have, uh, he also plays the role of, or the voice of Shutaro Mendo, Mendo, sorry, Shutaro Mendo, <laughs> in <laughs> Urusei Yatsura. <laughs> and a lot of other ones we're actually going to talk about later on. So please give it up for Jack Stansberry. Hi. Woo! Yeah. Thank you so much, Onyx, for the celebration in the background. I'm so happy oh, to thanks, be here. Thanks to you. I had to admit it. It's more exhausting than it looks like. I thought it would be easier. You know, like, That's pretty <laughs> intense. Yeah. <laughs> and I start sweating already. So I, only I tried it, it like... a few times after watching Oshinoko. Yeah, not an easy feat. <laughs> All I'm going to say is there's actually a VR game just on that, and you sweat a lot. <laughs> is it Beat Saber? It's not Beat Saber, no. Beat Saber, you you sweat a lot. But there's actually one that's specific. It's even in Japanese. I don't know what it's called, but it's specifically, uh, and like you are uh, playing the glow sticks for an idol. Like the idol's oh dancing right in front goodness. of you, and you're playing the glow sticks. Wow. Okay, so I need to get that now. That's something I need. I, to I, I'll, I'll check for the name, but I I don't remember it on the top of my head. <laughs> I'm sweating. I tried to catch up my breath now, so that was a bad idea, honestly. <laughs> Take a load up, but I get some water. <laughs> but thank you so much, Jack. It, it is an honor, honestly, being with you tonight, especially with so many hits that you're involved. I mean, I, I think what you're one of those top art artists that went under the radar for many times because you're involved in many well-known projects, anime. But suddenly you hit back to back two big projects from Hen uh same time film damn what's there something wrong with there <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, that was a close one buddy <laughs> I, like, I heard and i'm like are you sure you want to say that <laughs> from same time film and the highlight <laughs> damn that happened when you lack in oxygen so let's, pick, let's start with the big one uh aqua ochinoko one of the biggest series that i those who follow it they knew it was going to be a hit Though they were not, did not knew about it. We didn't knew what was going on, and suddenly, social media go down the week of the release. They now the release go down for like for two weeks. Just talking about this series, Jack. When we tell me your your, your reaction about this series to, to start with. Oh man, so I I am one of these long, uh, not long time fans, but whenever once High Dive acquired the show. I started reading the manga and learning more about it. And so for months I've been anticipating it. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm one of these people that has been eagerly awaiting it. And even so, it's pretty bananas how much, like you said, it took over everywhere. Uh, I mean, just like, and still every Wednesday, Oshinoko Trends, uh, it's, it's pretty shocking and impressive how immediately, hugely successful it's become. Um, but you know, that's just a testament to Aka Akasaka's writing. Um, the animation is incredible. The original voice actors are incredible. Um, they've they've produced something truly incredible. And not not only that, you mentioned that it go trend. If I'm not wrong, I think I'm kind of sure I'm correct. I hear the news that it took the billboard for one week. So it it it's it been like a very top place. The opening song of the yeah. And I believe I saw the news. I believe it because I tried to use a reference for this episode with the Oshinoko songs. Mm -hmm. And right now, YouTube is holding the material of Oshinoko like never before. Like it's a video that you cannot use. You need to watch out so bad with any music, lyric, or oh. visual. At the moment you try to upload something similar with the opening, it go banned. So wow. When usually this happens when a big video audio production go to the tops. And Oshinoko, he break the records, and it really it, it excited me because it's, it, we're used to see this kind of uh, success during well-known company like uh, Funimation and when it was called Funimation and Crunchyroll that they merged together. But we have recognized that High Dive is one of the company that was already there in the shadows, and once Crunchyroll merged with Funimation, they stepped up to the game. Okay, okay, hey guys, we're going to be here now and i can mm -hmm. tell you uh we're going to talk more about it later how uh high that is stepping up the game like never before right now but you have a very special role aqua aquamarine or aqua ochina we it's super interesting correct me if i'm wrong your that role is split between three voice actors right technically yeah so okay spoilers for the early parts of the show they'll be spoiler today it's yeah, too, okay, it's okay, too cool. late 
Let's good go. to know. <laughs> so this character was a like mid thirties gynecologist named Goro, who died and was isekai'd into uh, like a baby's body, the son, the son of Ai Hoshino. And so those are two different actors. Um, the baby and Goro, and then Aqua grows up to become a teenager, and then that's me. And then he's a teenager for the rest of the show. So yeah, three characters for one isekai, three actors for one isekai character. And many times, this is what I love about English dub. There's some people that, I mean, you watch it as you want. You eat your hamburger the way you like it. You eat your pizza with pineapple, no pineapple, pepperoni, <laughs> and you can see your anime the way you like it. Yeah. However, we have to acknowledge and recognize that there's no way I'm, I'm, I'm drawing this fight down. When you watch it in your original language, being English, Spanish, Vietnamese, Portuguese, Russian, whatever you watch that you're more used to it, it's easier to catch details like the voice acting, change of voice, change of role, jokes, situation, reference, cultural reference. There's so much that, yeah. that you miss with the original language because you're not from Japan. You don't speak Japanese. You're not going to get a joke about a product that they sell tuna in the market at 75 cents. Oh, sorry, 75 yen. So <laughs> there you go. It, it's easier to, and when I was watching last night, the first episode in English dub, I was here like, wait, I got a switch of voice actor. Then we, we go to the baby age, and like, wait, that's a different voice actor, which makes it making sense to me. And so we get to your aqua, the teenager, and I'm like, holy crap. Ja uh, these voice actors are amazing, are doing magic, or something else going on. And then I, I had to realize, okay, we're speaking, speaking about three voice actors here. Yeah. So if you had to describe your, your, your character, how do you describe Aqua? Aqua? <laughs> I would describe Aqua as a gloomy, sulking, um, obsessed, kind of a maniac. So the, the, the plot of the show is that um, his mother that he was like reincarnated into, his, his reincarnated mother, um, was murdered when he was very young. And so he is spending the rest of his life plotting his revenge against the person who orchestrated his mother's murder. So he's in this bizarre position of being this like adult mind in a teenage body where, you know, in the first place, just that would make him totally out of place. But on top of that, he's spending his whole youth trying to investigate people in showbiz, seeing who might have done it, who might be connected to his mother. And so he lives this very real double life where he sees interacting with his sister and his adoptive mother and his adoptive father kind of and, and making friends in high school. But at the same time, he's he's manipulating and calculating. And there's a lot going on behind the eyes and a lot of internal monologues. So he uh, he's very smart. He's very traumatized and he's very gloomy. For me, I was about to say, when you start describing Aqua, I'm like, oh, so guys, so technically he's Jackie just describing a uh, med school student who is in, <laughs> in middle career. Uh, gloomy, eager, target oriented, knowing yeah. his goal, very focused on what he's doing, with a lot of knowledge. He's thinking about beyond, thinking about everything going on around to so get a conclusion. So, I mean. He already had all the practice. He knew how to do it already. He was a doc. He is. He is a doctor. In his, uh, yeah, yeah. He's a gynecologist. And <laughs> that worries me, though, Onyx. I'm like, was I ever gloomy? <laughs> oh, Kara. Oh, uh, by the way, Kara is a doctor. MD. <laughs> well, doctor. really? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, my yeah. goodness. But I'm like, well, I'm thinking, like, that's that's very sad. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I get it, right? It's like it's so much work, and I feel like you you know better than I do. You have to be so targeted and kind of focused, uh, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you have to be like really type A. Like you have to have your 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 eggs in order. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Sure. That makes sense. Very focused. Yeah. Yeah. Med school life. I can tell you guys that's a different podcast. A full full episode on that. How the person and the surrounding people have to adapt their career. But yeah, I don't care. Yeah, you were gloomy during those first and second year. <laughs> I mean, it, it is expected. It's expected. I mean, yeah, they're the hardest. It's weird to see a happy sunshine person during those first year of my school, knowing yeah. all those. Books. But going to something happier, I mean, not happier, uh, I mean, interesting. I mean, Oshinoko, uh, this, for me, it was a very different anime series. Not only, I mean, I mentioned it went viral in no time. It was expected, went to, to even Twitter has been on fire with every episode. Yeah. But something that really hit me the topics on this anime. Usually we hear about Isekai's going to the video game world, saving the hero. But this time, even though it's 
is tricky question. Do you consider it an isekai or not? I do consider it an isekai in the strictest possible terms, in that a person is getting reincarnated and kind of discovering a new life. Um, but I totally understand your point, which is that it's not isekai at all in another sense. Because, like, if you just tell someone the line-by-line -line synopsis of the show, right, like 35-year-old gynecologist, gynecologist gets reborn as a pop idol, they'd be like, okay, that's going to be the wackiest, zaniest show in the world. But it's so grounded and dramatic and very real despite that which too but that's the unexpected part right you wouldn't guess that it would be like that but it's extremely psychological and human in a in a really i think compelling way right i i will say and somebody asked me this question at a convention we were in a panel we were panelists in another, another convention we were spoke, speaking about anime and they throw me a question like this in front of 100 people and i like sweating like damn i never thought about this I will say I don't consider Isekai just because he reincarnated in the same world. No, I mean, ah. but even that, you have a good point. He he didn't reincarnate in another world. He reincarnated in the same world, mm -hmm. just a uh, seconds different from his death. And even though, like you mentioned, I want to tra tra uh, transfer the Wait. conversation. To Wait, I want to make a little parenthesis here. If if that were the case, uh, and, and this is this is not an anime in which Jack um, actually stars in, but it's like it, it's just with the isekai vibe. Would you consider a, a um, uncle from another world to be isekai? Because he he was in another world, but he was in a coma. He didn't reincarnate. Ah, I see what you're saying. Well, uh, like, wait. Then, then you have to say like is. SAO, Sword Art Online, seems to be like to be the progenitor Isekai, and he exactly. did not die. He just bounced back it's... and forth between two worlds. Yes. That, that was the anime they asked me about it. We were so quick about SAO, and they asked me, is Isekai or not? And I had to say no, okay. because it was another world. They were just connecting in reality in a gaming real, uh, world. And Onkor in another world is a Isekai, because he went to the other world. He spent his life, and now he made it back. So it's. It is. It's, oh, he it's never like a, died. It's a Schrodinger uh, scenario. Mm. It's, it, it is, and it is not at the same time. <laughs> we're, we're we're really getting deep here. <laughs> we're, 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 we're figuring out the important questions. Like, we're getting too I mean, philosophical on things that don't exist. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, I will slow down over there. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to draw something hot here, but yeah, not with it. intention to offend anybody in religious. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think Buddhist, 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 oh, Buddhism, Buddhism, oh. Buddhism, Buddhism. Buddhism. Belief in the reincarnation, in your life in another life, another type of form. It's, there's a religion that believe in it, so that's not Isekai. That's a type of religion, honestly. Uh, I can recall the one. Uh, my apology for those who practice the relig that religion, but I know that there's a religion that believe that the soul transfers to another type of form of life, and that's a secret of life. So we're going too deep now. But going back to the anime, <laughs> speed run from anime to real world religion in ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's how serious this anime is. And that's how going, serious it is. Going back to serious, it touched so many points that I never hear before in any series, not anime series only, any TV show where we speak about the idol. Oshinoko is, is centralized in the voice of of idols. Mm. But we usually when we see idol, we just see the yeah, yeah like, dancing around, famous, fame. Yeah. Take them out, take them out. We know, <laughs> no, I'm going to lose my breath again. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to move, just wave them around. Yeah, there you go, you did a little one. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, okay, so, so, but we never went, nobody go deep about or beyond that we know that many the companies explode the talents that they try to make the revenue of them but yeah. beyond that we never spoke and this show is going to draw to those sensitive nerves of the industry and it's not only happened episode zero from the first episode it happened also made zero that it was a big controversy with episode six yeah which i can recall the name now oh. we're going to spoil Ego surfing or, is the name. Ego of the surfing, episode. yeah, yeah. We're going to spell that one. It's too late already. But ego surfing have a very sensitive uh, scenario where one of the characters, after being bullied by social media, and she being a junior in the world of entertainment, she couldn't not handle it. I mean, nobody can handle it, honestly. And especially you're not well prepared for this. So it hit her so bad that she attempt against her life. Now this is when it got sensitive. So. We saw it happening, 
the show end up with a message like, hey, you need help, seek your help here. This is the, connect, the emergency line for people who need help. Don't mm -hmm. go for it. But later on, it comes to the news that that episode was inspired in a real event. Only that in the real event, the help never make it on time. We should make way more sensitive that kind of topic. Yeah. And to make it more sensitive, and this is when sometimes we see how social media is going to screw up. Uh, people, the family of the victim, didn't, didn't say thank you, but no thank you. They didn't like to see that. I mean, that's what I hear about rumors and news. that sh They didn't appreciate that reference of the uh, beloved daughter. And then social media, the fans of the show, start bullying the mom of the person. So we're like, hey, guys, so... The main talk message in the series on that episode is watch out what you do with how you treat people fully because it cannot, it, it, you may way more damage than you think. Yeah. And you didn't learn the lesson there. It, it screw up world. But again, your take on, on, on this anime, on this series, Jack. My take on this series? Yeah, on, on, on this kind of topic that they're to touching the, the series. Yeah, I mean, it is extremely sensitive. And I think. Well, I, I, I want to say, separate from its relationship to the real-world events um, that, that are inspiring controversy currently, I think um, it is scary, but maybe very meaningful to depict something that is uh, really horrific, but is absolutely real, which is, um, you know, people becoming the target of severe cyberbullying online, especially when something like that gains traction with you know, large swathes of, uh, of audience members in the internet. And, you know, especially when it's a young person like it is in the show, uh, the character's named Akane, she's like 16 years old. Yeah, the effects that can have on a person, um, even on a fully formed adult, are terrifying, and on a teen teen teenage person, even more so. Um, I respect High Dive a lot for plugging the suicide hotline number at the end of the show. Um, I think that was their addition, and I that was uh, amazing of them. And uh, ap again, apart from the real world controversy associated with the, the real world events, I saw a lot of really meaningful discussion about it online after the show. Um, people talking about, yeah, this is a real thing. This is serious. Um, you wish it would. Uh, inspire people to make better decisions about cyberbullying others in real life. Um, that is disappointing to hear that they're like, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a show that does not hold its punches at all. Yeah, definitely. And I'm going to try to keep the good, ho the good hopes here. I'm sure many people learn, of course. There's always yeah. some people that did not learn. And sadly, on real life, the bad people make, make more noise than the good people. That's why for me, this that's is how a I see it. Yeah, this is a point that's actually addressed in the show too, right? The vocal minority always seems larger than they are, right? But this is, in, in any situation where vitriol is being spewed against someone, it's it's like a small group of very, very dedicated people who for some reason are, you know, allocating huge amounts of their time and energy to some hate-filled cause. And, and the reality is that they are not representative of larger audiences, which thank right. God for that. There's more good people out there than not good people, only that yeah the, 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 the superhero they never showed their identity that's what happened yep. so, so, <laughs> yeah so so moving yeah. something more happier than yeah I mean, yeah like the the <laughs> urusei urusei yasra yes. shutaro, shutaro. Why do I, why, I don't know why i keep messing up the name but shutaro mendo mendo love him in urusei yatsura uh how about, no, I'm going to have Jack tell us a little bit about Mendo and his role in the series, especially what he does when the lights go off. Oh my goodness. Okay, so uh, Uda Zayatara, to explain the show to you, to any of you who haven't seen that, is kind of like a teen romantic comedy from the eras of old in Japan. It's a remake of a golden age of anime show um, with beautiful, beautiful modern animation and music. Um, and Mendo plays the snobby, rich, very cultured and civilized foil to the uh, kind of <laughs> uh, pervy, gross, shameless main character, Ataru. Uh, he is the most fun character in the universe to play. I feel so lucky that I get to record for him and have been recording for him for a while now. It's the best. If you haven't watched it, you need to. Question. This is kind of personal. Do you yeah. share any common characteristic with Mendo? 
Uh, so to Kiara's point, I am not scared of the dark. <laughs> <laughs> and Mendo definitely is, as you will find out in episode three. Um, I, the, the shameful thing is that on some level, I think I kind of do. Like Mendo, he loves walking into a room and like kind of carrying a big presence and having people think of him as like really cool and charming and smart. And I kind of like that too. I'm not going to lie. I channel a lot of that energy when I come in to record for it. That's good. That's good. So what I love, the, the one thing I love about also about Mendo is that he wants to be a ladies man. Oh, yeah. He wants to have all the girls and he will go out of his way to to be like here's your noble steed and then you put him in the dark and he's the biggest scaredy cat out there yeah and that's just loads of comedy right there like the entire show is loads of comedy my question for you jack is how do you come about to play the role of mendo uh so i did audition for the role um, so Shannon Reed is the director for that show, and right before they cast Uruse Atsuda, I had worked with him for the first time on a different show called Ya Boy Kong Ming. And I didn't have a big part in Ya Boy Kong Ming, I had like a single episode antagonist named Ryo. But that recording session, it was like, it was scheduled for two hours, and it was, I, it was just like the best recording session ever. I don't know how to describe it. There was just like no friction at all. We like all the ideas were flowing freely. We both understood the humor. It was just very easy. Sorry, I hit my microphone. It was very easy to work with Shannon. And I, I feel like kind of we both walked away from that session. That was our first time working together, thinking like we we work really well together. That went super well. And so a few months after that, they were casting Uruse Atsuda. And he brought me into audition for Ataru first, the lead which was super fun, really great. Um, but then afterwards, he also brought me on for Mendo. And it just it just felt like a glove. It just went super well. And uh, yeah, then we were off to the races. If you had to describe that series, how would you describe it? Because it is a unique anime series in today's day's market. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if I had to describe the series, how would I describe it? I would say, uh, yeah, it's like retro Ranma comedy, like golden age of era, like romantic comedy from Japan. Um, it's a bunch of really silly, flawed, idiotic people trying to like fall in love and get what they want. In like Mendo's case, he wants to be a ladies' man, but he never succeeds. Um, it's also not, it's, it's episodic, by which I mean there's no like huge overarching narrative, which I consider to be a huge strength. Because oftentimes- That's what I was gonna bring up, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oftentimes, I don't want to like engage with a 24 episode ordeal. I just want to turn something on and have fun, like SpongeBob or Looney Tunes. And yeah, not think about anything. Yeah, just turn, and you don't need to Unwind. know anything about the show. You, you can go into any episode not knowing anything and it's just fun, it's funny, it's beautiful. The music, the, it's a bop, dude. The music is so good. Every single OP, every single ED. It's a really wonderful viewing experience. And like I said, super low barrier to entry. You don't need to know anything. Just hop in and enjoy. And then, yeah, and if you enjoy it, just simply go back to the first episode. And that's the thing. Again, you don't have to watch them in order. You don't really have to watch them in order. It's like, mm, today I had a very stressful day at work or something. Let me just watch something to unwind. But whichever episode, laugh, move on. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Plus, it's there's a lot of it. Um, there's we're doing 24 episodes in the first two cores, I think, and we're doing two more cores co next year of the same length. So there's gonna be what, like four. What is a, a core? Oh, it's like a season. Okay. We've done, we've done so we're doing two seasons right now, and they're producing two more seasons sometime next year. And Perfect. for me, it, it's kind of special because um, it is it, it is like it is a remake of the original anime that was live uh, early 2000s, and those who remember. All from the old schools, from the anime when anime used to be watched only by LimeWire or <laughs> VHS, yeah, rented, or DVD that you buy for three bucks from the random guy that it, it was something weird. Anime, it was like a bootlegs. It, <laughs> yeah, it was like a color like, for what it is. <laughs> It was weird back then to find anime, especially new anime. And that time when we the anime that we used to watch on TV was the classic one, like Ramai and a Half, Ramai Medio in Spanish, um, Samurai X, uh, Ronin Kenshin, um, 
bleach. So it, it is a very style pencil and cartoonish anime. Yeah. So yeah. When we see Jas Jas, uh, we're seeing the same style. It's nostalgic to see the comedy from back then, uh, only with today's technique and voice actor and everything. So it's refreshing to watch, it, honestly. Yeah, yeah, and I'm so glad that they honored like the heritage of the show by not like changing it a ton in terms of its aesthetic and design. Because you're right, it is refreshing and it's 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 cool and different in today's anime landscape. It's extremely different from anything else being made, which is awesome. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. When Onyx first showed me um, what we were gonna watch, because let's put it, let, let's be honest. I'll sit down and watch something and Onyx will be like, okay, we're watching this anime. And I'm like, okay, I'll get to pick, I'll get to pick at some point in my life. Okay, okay. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I'm like, sure, sure, just put it. Fine. So where he put it, exactly. So where he put it, I was like a little adamant because that day I really didn't want to watch anything that he, that any anime. I was like, for, for once in, I don't know how many months I want to watch real people. <laughs> But the thing is, where he put it, it was old style anime, and I was like, Onyx, what year is this? Why are you putting this? What the heck? And he's like, no, it's a remake. It's made in like in the old style of anime. I'm like, oh, fine, I'll give it a watch. And then I liked it. <laughs> I, have so, to yeah. <laughs> I have to confess, from these remakes, I enjoy them, to be honest. Sometimes I miss the cancelable content that in the 90s they have and they don't have it now. For example, I decided to go to Hulu and play Rama and a Half. There's mm -hmm. over there. I'm watching the, the working in the kitchen, Kiara working on, on her stuff on the room. And suddenly they did something that I hear Kiara like, from far. No, they did not do that. And they they were uh, characterizing uh, a character from China and they make the Chinese accent like oh. classic joke in TV that today oh they will my. be cancelable. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, oh my yeah, God. okay. I'll amend my earlier statement. They did not. They did not respect all of the heritage, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Some <laughs> amendments have been made. <laughs> they were because back then you cannot do that. But they were. They were like, oh, so you want. So you don't want, I don't want to do it. I don't want to get canceled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we saw it and, and it's like ghost stories. The, the, the. Oh, yeah. Okay, let me put it this way: in Ramba and a Half, whatever Onyx was watching, again, I wasn't watching. I was just, I was just working, and I heard it, and I was like, they, again, they did not do this. They did not just characterize and and, and do a satire of the accent. Yes, they did. But then in Ghost Stories, you have these very, very uh, uh, cancelable uh, <laughs> um, uh, jokes. And yeah. you're like, when Onyx put it, I was like, oh my gosh, they did not say all these things and they were still going on in the air. But then again, when you look back, it's like, oh, okay, it, it aired in 2005. So the censors and the people watching it were not as harsh. And there were definitely jokes that you, you can't say today and you can't even air that show today, period, on TV. Because yeah. you're going to get a, a lot of backlash. Not even in YouTube. Not even in YouTube, I will uh, I will quote so many lines. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I feel it's easy to forget sometimes, at least for me, like how far we've come in terms of try, like trying to make an effort to respect people of, of you know different origins and like. Uh, but sometimes you watch some shit from like the early two thousands and like, bro, that was on network TV. What? No way they greenlit that, but they did. It, it, it is. I mean, it is, it is great because it, it, that can, it, at the same time, it means that we are win, we are witness of how culture evolved so fast. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we say fast, but honestly, it took 30 years to evolve. I mean, many things in, in, in our culture, in American culture, American being North, South, and, East, and, and Center, and Center America, mm -hmm. Central America, many things in the culture that evolve, we say, oh no. This historical event is happened in the 90s, 80s, but, but then we're like, wait, that sounds, that's not too, too far. That's even 100 years ago. So, yeah, we're just witnessing many cultural evolution. Yeah. Um, 
with the, with the best intention for everybody's yeah. sake. But now we're speaking about history. So Jack, how do you start in this industry? Did you just one day say, okay, I'm, I'm going to be a voice actor or you just came to the world, oh, I'm a voice actor. How this happened? It was exactly like that. One day I said, I'm going to be a voice actor. You're really? Right. Yeah, yeah, that's what happened. So. Uh, unlike a lot of people who become professional actors of one sort or another, I had no background in acting growing up. Um, I did a lot of arts, like I sang and I played saxophone and I love performing and I have for my whole life. But I was never really an actor um, until one day I decided I'm going to do this for my career. I'm going to try to. My first career was as a software developer. I studied computer science in college and I showed up to my first job out of college. I moved from Phoenix, Arizona to Madison, Wisconsin for that job. And I showed up and I realized I'd made a terrible mistake. <laughs> I was so unhappy because I realized I just didn't care about it. I had thought that if I like got some fancy job that paid a lot of money, that I'd be able to figure everything else out, right? Like as long as I got those things taken care of, I'd be able to discover happiness in some, in some other part of my life. But I think I found out pretty quickly that it's actually very important to me personally to have a career that means a lot to me and that fulfills me and stimulates me and challenges me. Um, so I started thinking about, you know, if I'm gonna do something else because this isn't working anymore, what would I do that would make me happy? How could I fix this problem? And I thought back on all the times in my life when I'd felt you know, stimulated and challenged and fulfilled and every example I could think of was performative in nature. It was a lot of like public speaking, um, like random comedy things, playing music, playing sports, um, things where you're like performing in the moment and you're kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's time and you need to deliver. I live for that feeling. And from there, it wasn't hard to get to voice acting because I'm a weeb <laughs> and I really like anime. Um, and so I decided, as I said, I'm going to do everything in my power to make a, a successful voiceover business. Those were the words I used. I'm gonna do as much research as I can. I'm gonna um, talk to as many people in the industry as I can. I'm gonna do everything in my power to make it successful. And that way, if it doesn't work, if I crash and burn, I will know that it wasn't because I didn't try hard enough, right? I'm gonna give everything to this and whatever happens, happens. And I haven't crashed and burned yet. Fingers crossed. Um, so... <laughs> So, like, at what point in your life was that? Like, were you, well, I mean, you did say after software, so it was basically like after college. Mm -hmm. And you just, okay, let me just do a whole revamp of life. My question for you is, how difficult or easy mm. was it for you to do, to make that transition? Because there is a learning curve, obviously, and you have to make sure Am I am I uh, have uh, portraying these emotions how I want to, or am I changing my voice enough? Yeah. Like, what was your entire process like? Like learning, did you learn by yourself? Did you learn with like with, with other professionals? Did you go to? Do you take some courses? Like, what what was it? Yeah, uh, so I've done a lot of different things. I took like coaching from a lot of different people. I took a lot of different workshops. This the year that this was happening, by the way, was that was 2020. So um, this was all online. I was you know, stuck inside my apartment in Madison, Wisconsin. So I, did, I took a lot of online workshops and coaching. It's interesting that you ask how hard it was. I always feel like the acting has never been hard. I, like I've never, like in a coaching session or in a gig, felt like, man, I'm, I'm really, this is really tough. It feels like the reward. Like it's the most enjoyable thing in the world. I get to like have fun and do my arts. And oftentimes I get to work with really cool creative people. That part has so far never been hard. The hard part has been being a working actor and like the life of a working actor and rejection and learning how to handle rejection. And you know, all, all of the very real difficulties associated with you know, trying to make it as a professional actor. That's the hard part. Acting itself has always been the most enjoyable, pleasant, wonderful thing in the world. And you mentioned something that we can make a full an hour episode only about talking about this, about rejection, because when you go oh, to college yeah. and you get into a student loans, or once you make a lot of hundreds in student loans that you have to now, they're chasing your back to pay them. 
expect their expectation is that you're going to go into the market of the industry but yeah. in no point that i recall nobody prepare you for those rejection that you're going to be facing for the first year before you get oh, hot gosh, in the yeah. industry and it's so easy to f fall down like feel like you're losing the battle but it's because nobody prepared you to first nobody prepare you for the reality because yeah. school, that's not the pro that's not the job of the school the school wants to sell you a product and that's it so yeah. as, as economy they want to sell you they want to bring you to school uh teach you and give me more money until you have a degree and now you're out we, yeah. you, we sell the scholarship but that part of walking to an industry is very hard to handle and it happened all all, all type of all level of your life only that you're not used to it because suddenly you become 25 you have a diploma and uh student loan and now you're like oh well now it's the real life when, when the real game start yeah and that's the first world you're going to face mm -hmm. so that's interesting that you, i think you're one of the first persons to mention that about that dealing with that rejection uh, it's really tough it's really tough and i to your point I am someone who, for most of my life, a huge part of my personal identity was tied up in being a really good student um, through like high school and college. It was a huge part, like I, I prided myself on it. I considered it like a core part of my identity. And then you leave school and that part of your life is just gone. And suddenly you're faced with whole new challenges and circumstances that, like you said, you weren't prepared to deal with and you just have to figure it out on the fly. It was so, yeah, like in 2020, so many things were changing, right? School is gone. My career is gone. I'm changing complete. I'm one complete 180 in my life. And I'm having to figure out uh, how to handle rejection, how to decide what kind of person I want to be since being a student isn't an identity at the end of the day. You have to kind of figure out who you want to be in the absence of your profession and your education. And yeah, it's really hard. And I agree that I wasn't prepared for it. And I think few people are. I feel like I keep I keep joking about this. If someday I go back to school for any grad school degree, PhD, something like that, and I have to do a thesis, I'm going to make it on how, why voice act, why students that start in natural science end up in voice acting? Oh, really? I swear to you, I can make a playlist from all the people we interviewed so far in less than two years, and I have, I think, I have more than ten voice actors that they start in natural science. Wow. And sometimes they said, "Enough, this is not my thing. This is what I love. I'm chasing it." And it's super cool to hear how they were facing, like, just like you just mentioned, family uh, problem, mm -hmm. economical challenge, and they all, they all said screw it this is what i really want to do somehow going to do it and like you mentioned so that's so yeah. inspiring that you've met so many people who have gone down that path i tell you there's something i i somebody start need to start doing that research what's going on in natural science of course the natural science is kind of a kind of a meaning of nerds and nerds many nerds like anime stuff so you see a pattern but damn there's so many right now well i have a theory that applies to my life and it might apply to other people which is that when i was in high school um every single authority figure in the world said like oh well if you get a career in stem which is science technology engineering mathematics you'll make a hundred thousand dollars a year which sounded pretty good to me like everyone was like just do stem and you'll make a lot of money just do stem just do stem just do stem you'll be fine just do stem like okay i'll do stem and at no point in the conversation was anyone like what kind of person do you want to be that wasn't part of the conversation. And so I think a lot of people are led to a career path that doesn't actually serve who they are because it instead serves goals that they think they want. And then in early adulthood, they discover that those goals are actually not theirs. They're someone else's. And when sometimes I wish I could travel in time or sometimes I go very often to my school uh, as a for grad, uh, uh, alumni in my school, many times they invite me to help with interviewing them, preparing them for the industry. And I'm like, hey guys, uh, another professor tell you that you go to STEAM, you, you have a position secure, or yeah. you have a salary secure. And I'm like, no guys, it's not true. And even once you secure something, there's not that money. That was maybe 40 years ago, 30 years ago. But to mm. this day, it's a way difficult reality. So anyway, but going to something more happier, more. That's episode. 
We're going. What's going on, guys? What's going on? It must be the. the I'm not the helping smoke. things. I'm getting very philosophical no, on you. I think it's the smoke from from the fire going on. Do in, you want me to do a funny voice? I can do. I can make a funny face or something. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. I'm not going to hold you. No, guys, we're going to talk about some anime now. <laughs> so, going Damn, that anime. anime. That anime we're going to talk about is Farming Life in Another World. Hey, there you go. That's <laughs> it sounds like another isekai. I haven't watched it. It sounds like another isekai, so correct me if I'm wrong. Jack's going to tell us what the heck is Farming in an life, Farming Life in Another World. I'm happy to talk. And his that. role, which is Gucci. Yeah, Gucci, which is a great name, by the way. Gucci. Um, Farming Life in Another World is indeed an isekai, and it's a cozy isekai. It's not a power fantasy isekai. It's not a take over the world isekai. It's it's Stardew Valley isekai. It's I just want to live on a cozy farm and live off the land and plow my fields and be surrounded by people who love me. To that point, it is not just a farming isekai, but also a harem farming isekai. Yes. Those are the three pillars of what Farming Life in Another World is. It's, I mean, it's kind of hard to do anime or isekai and not do harem. They kind of go hand in hand. <laughs> That's what I was just saying. Like, they do go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. Kira, a while ago you mentioned, like, Uduse Atsuda being a good show to wind down with after a long day. That's how I feel about farming life in another world. It's very much just, like, it's cozy and warm. You don't have to think that hard about it. And that's part of the appeal to me. You just sit back and you watch the people who love each other, like, farm carrots and shit. So for the people who don't know what Stardew Valley is, I'm gonna say, mm, yeah. how about, cause, cause we all did something in 2020 so while we were sitting around, especially for the, it was a big thing that took off in 2020. And for those of you who have Nintendo Switches and it was Animal Crossing. So like, if you don't know what Stardew Valley is, well, liken it almost to Animal Crossing and then boom, here we go. Everybody love that out, the outdoors of Animal Crossing and that <laughs> unwinding and task oriented thing. So maybe we can liken that also to farming life in another world. Yeah, I think that's very apt. Yeah, task oriented is a good way of putting it. It's like accomplishing things and building things and it's very inherently satisfying. Yeah. But with the only thing we're missing in Nintendo Switch, with the itchy. That's what. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the little edgy <laughs> spice. There you go. <laughs> That's why we need it. Thank you so much excellent. for incorporating that hand gesture. I'm never going to be able to think of edgy ever again without doing this. <laughs> I <laughs> mean, a little extra on there, a little edgy. Yeah, That's what we're here for, to connect different people and then give them something to remember us by. <laughs> More spice, yeah. We're inspiring young people to do farming practice with edgy. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and, and talking about Echi, do you have another anime th uh, series that is very Echi too? Wait, 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 before we even move on, oh, yeah. was, there anything you, was there anything else you wanted to say about farming? Oh, yeah, we didn't world? talk about the show. We got too excited about the <laughs> Yeah, we just mentioned it. I'm like, okay, moving on. <laughs> Oh man, um, it's a great show. Um, it's very enjoyable. Like I said, it's just like a, it's not super complicated. It's just enjoyable, warm, cozy fun. If, and uh, in dark times, like we are seeing constant, like we're constantly facing, it, sometimes you need that. Uh, it's, it's a very enjoyable show. I act opposite, I think Andrew Love, who is another super talented voice actor at Sentai. Um, I, he's like the Dragon King and I play his loyal right-hand man. Um, Blake Shepard is playing the lead. Everyone sounds incredible. It's a great cast. Go check it out. Definitely. And shout out to High Dive. I mean, um, probably people who know me already, I work very close with Crunchyroll, many of, of the activity with you anime, but also I work with anybody who incentivizes the, the industry in anime. And High Dive is a stepping up the game. I mean, I don't want to jinx it, but right now, in the last two weeks, they have been on fire mm -hmm. drawing the English dub anime, announcing new dubs. And I think for the first time, we I never seen that there's an anime on High Dive on release of Simulcast. And without finishing of releasing the whole series, they are dubbing there. And we're speaking about Oshinoko, which is the one that right now they're like episode four about to be released. Yeah. While Sop is the arena, Sop is on episode eight to be released. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for the first time, High Dive is stepping up the game. I'm so happy to hear that. And one of the biggest uh, collaborators from High Dive, or the main collaborator, is, is Sentai Film. So, it, for me, so I'm so excited to see that. And Sentai Film, I always said it, they have a very 
special place in my heart because they bring the anime that they are not very common in in the commercial platform mm -hmm. but people enjoy them in the original way in on sensor yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that, that was uh and also cultural anime uh, we have a very um i don't want to i don't want to screw this one but uh, uh goodbye don't glee it is from sentai film okay yeah, am i am i, I right on that one i don't know i don't know that show i can double check right now if you it's want. a movie uh goodbye don't glee i think that was from sentai film okay we have damn it, it oh happened the same time summer summer goals i love that one um there anyway, is so many that I, last thing it, it just happened the same uh, there's a big list and i forget the moment that camera is on but Santa Fe is doing a great job right now with the anime industry uh, big collaborator and now they're stepping up the game bringing the top more fast step before yeah and talking about bringing fast anime and another edgy and uh, it, it is sensor we're talking about akiba Megwar. Hey, the crucial enforcer. The enforcer, the deck collector. Yeah. Tell uh, us a little bit about that theory. Akiba Made War is so fun. Um, I've heard it described by one fan as Quentin Tarantino Made Cafe, um, which is pretty apt. So, so okay, in, in this universe, in this Japan, Made Cafes are extensions of organized crime. They're like foot soldiers for the Yakuza. And so our protagonist, uh, Nagomi, is a bright-eyed young woman who has dreamed of being a maid in a maid cafe. And she's wanted to do it her whole life. And she shows up and, okay, well, they're actually, like, crime bosses. And it's pretty intense. Her coworkers are murderers. Um, they are extremely intense. Um, but there's also a real charm to how bright-eyed and enthusiastic she is, as a contrast to, like, the seedy underworld she occupies. Um, I play this character, the Enforcer, the Debt Collector, and I am kind of the liaison between the, the crime boss heads and these maid cafes. So you see me in most of the episodes telling them all of the horrible things I'm going to do to these maids if they don't, you know, pay their dues. It's, uh, it's wacky, it's crazy, it's very bloody, and it's super fun. Really? Okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense with a name. Like, again, for somebody like me who hasn't watched it before, it makes a lot of sense why it has war in the title. It is <laughs> so a like, war, yeah. Because when I, a... I hear that, when I hear it, it's like, Akiba made war. I'm like, okay, made what? Okay, got it. Yeah, well, it sounds like, it, just from the title, it sounds like, okay, maybe it's like a idol competition made cafe thing. No, right. <laughs> there are a lot of guns. <laughs> I walk in, I walk in, think it was like I'm competing for going to be the most cat cafe. They had the cat cafe, cat cafe. They had the all this type of made cafe, but I was expecting a uh, kawaii battle. Yeah, and the first episode, I'm like, oh my god, all all this blood all around. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It this is a brutal, is like, brutal show. Um, in a kind of satisfying way. There's, there's, in the first totally or second kids. episode. Yeah, 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 watch that. <laughs> um, in the first or second episode, they have this, like, musical sequence. And in the dub, they, they actually dub the song, which is incredible. Um, where, um, one of the maids just goes on, like, a killing spree against one of the other maid cafes in... Uh, what like an incredible visual and musical sequence the animation's crazy like even if you don't watch any other part of the show go watch that it is a worthwhile experience in and of itself yeah yeah what kind of characters have you enjoyed the most out of every character you've played or i'm sorry you've you voiced which one have you enjoyed like the most to voice and why oh man okay so i'm gonna go back to early in our list and i'm gonna talk about mendo Mendo is I, okay. I'm a very comedic person. I love telling jokes. I do like improv comedy. I love I love comedy. And Mendo is the funniest character in the universe. I, we say the same thing every single time we record for that show. Shannon and I and David Lasko, our audio engineer, which is like the show is so fun. It is such a gift to get to be <laughs> so ridiculous with Mendo. And uh, you put it pretty well earlier, Tara. 
Mando is someone who tries so hard to be so cool and so charming and so smart all the time, and he just fails. <laughs> he never wins, and it's incredible. Um, so I'll say that Mendo, as of recording this, is my favorite character to play. But Oshinoko is in its early days. We have three episodes of the dub out. We're actively recording for it. And I'm telling you, some of the stuff we have coming down the pipeline that you're going to be hearing in the coming weeks, it blew my mind, and I hope it blows yours. So Aqua is probably going to be up there, if not surpassing Mendo, in the next few weeks. And, wow. uh, and I will tell you guys, it, just, it happened to me. There's even that if you watch it already in sub, give your chance a chance to watch it on English dub because you're going to see the other face that you haven't been able to see like due, due to the lack of cultural immersion. So yeah. it happened to us many times yesterday. I was like, oh, wow, what, what? So it, it happened. It's really going to happen. So whips code here. So we have to speak about men. We code. <laughs> yeah, <we're> like, <laughs> So in real, and we know in the show that Mendo having a, is failing to obtain a good girl, a, obtain a girl for him with the approach. But yeah. in reality, today's day, do you think his standing will be successful in today's <laughs> reality? Like from one to ten, how successful would you consider? His I approach? think I think that Mendo would be he would he would get a lot of first dates. He would use all the online dating apps. Actually, he would probably pay some of his servants to use the online dating apps for him. And you have very, he's very hot. He's got a lot of flattering pictures of him. I don't think he'd make it past many first dates because he is unbelievably shallow and narcissistic. But he'd get a lot of first dates because it is like canon that he's super hot. The only problem that in reality he will have is whenever the times in the shadows comes that he will going to fail like never before. <laughs> yeah, he only goes in like on daytime coffee dates in broad daylight. <laughs> he won't do a movie with you. He won't go for a walk in the park at night with you. Only daylight. All I'm <laughs> thinking. Like a vampire. <laughs> All I'm thinking is, hmm, what happens? Uh, I want to. I want to say he got. He actually scored this time, right? Mm. And it's not the day after, morning after. Well, what happens when the lights go off? I want to, and then we just want to go to bed together. It's like, mm, thank you. I went that far. Uh, yeah, I did. I did. We, we're we're getting really philosophical in this episode, so I might as well do it. And I have an equally philosophical response, Kara. Because if you watch episode three, there are like specific mechanics to how this works with Mendo, right? So when a, like a beautiful lady is with him he's okay he can kind of keep it together it's only when he's alone alone i was about to say that so i imagine how it would go is he'd be like yeah. oh yeah i forgot that like shivering trying so hard to stay cool and he'd just be able to do it it's only if that's he's right alone. that's the what, conditions uh, need to be that, there I, I forgot uh the, the main character's name anyway what uh, 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 yes he will he will <laughs> He will get the trash can and just put it over Mendo. Yeah. Like now you're oh, alone. So funny. Let's say yeah, when he uh, I think it's like a diving bell. That's what it is. It's like this giant Something. thing. And it's like it's like Looney Tunes. It's literally like Looney Tunes. Like, where the fuck did you get that? But he just drops it on him and you can hear his muffled screaming from inside. <laughs> it, it is a great anime. You guys need to check it out. Yeah, please. Jack. Thank you so much. I'd be so wonderful talking to you. So those who haven't followed you yet in social media, where they can follow you? You can follow me on uh, at Jack Stansbury VO on both Twitter and Instagram. Those are the places I'm most active. And if you do, you'll hear about all the new things I'm doing, which are uh, more and more and more these days. Got a lot of exciting stuff coming down the pipeline. Definitely. And check out Jack's website. I, it was super fun. I love the background. Uh, it have a vibe of like a wolf rain. I, oh, I love it. Oh my yeah. God, that's so cool. Yeah, jackstansbury.com if you want to visit. I'm very proud of that website. Thank you for saying that, Onyx. Yeah, definitely. And I like, always got to remember the link for Jack's website is down in the description and to all his social media. And for us, I subscribe, like, and share in all our social media, especially YouTube here. Subscribe, like, and share uh, comments in this video for any questions that you guys want to share with Jack or anybody else. And all our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, uh, TikTok, even that we are the same channel. The people, we have different type of content on each of them. I promise you guys, especially TikTok. It's like and Twitch. Twitch. And Twitch now, Twitch, you know, with that, hey, Twitch. 
and I tell you guys, in all social platforms, it's something different. Uh, I don't know which one is darker uh, between Twitch and and TikTok. And TikTok, it's, it's hard to decide which one is darker, but they're funny and good to see my trailer. So thank you so much, <laughs> and I will see you in the next episode. Sayonara. Bye. Bye.